Bugis Television Inyanganiyoi I take this opportunity to welcome you to Bugis Television I'm Kapeo Paul. Today we shall be looking at different issues to do with the BCU or Bugisu Cooperative Union. Before we continue, if you've not yet subscribed to this channel, I request that you subscribe for more of such episodes. The Bugisu Cooperative Union Limited is a Ugandan Agriculture Cooperative Federation established in July 1954. It was started by a group of coffee farmers led by the late E.V. Samson Kitoto. A new Bugisu coffee ordinance was enacted in 1955, providing for BCU Limited to take over all the marketing functions from the Bugisu coffee scheme, as well as all the scheme's assets except the reserve funds which were still held by Wogesu Coffee Board. BCU is owned by coffee farmers who are organized in primary societies. Each primary society keeps a register of its fully paid up members who elect a committee which manages the society's affairs. Each primary society is represented by two delegates at the annual general meeting. In addition to other functions, the AGM, elects board members who in turn appoint and supervise the management team. A BCU also operates according to international cooperatives principles. Bugisu Cooperative Union is the leading buyer and marketeer of Arabica coffee. The Arabica coffee in Bugisu grows on volcanic soils at an altitude of between 3,800 feet and 14,700 feet above sea level. The roasted Arabica coffee beans have a mild sweet aroma and good taste. Arabica coffee is grown on small gardens owned by individual farmers. This coffee is mostly organically grown, but in some cases fertilizers are applied. Primary processing involves the pulping of ripe coffee cherries, the fermenting, the washing thoroughly with clean water and drying it on wire mesh that is placed 2 meters above the ground to avoid contamination. In addition, a BCU owns central pariparis where coffee berries are pulped on large scale and dried under controlled temperatures. After the coffee has dried, the farmers sell it to the primary society, which in turn delivers it to BCU mill. At BCU, a coffee is inspected, tested for moisture content, and weighed before it is stored in silos. At the moment, Bogisu Cooperative Union Limited owns a tune of nine silos that store up to 20 tons each of green beans of Arabica coffee. Bogisu Cooperative Union Limited is located at Plot 46 Palsa Road in Mbale City in Bogisu sub-region in eastern Uganda, East Africa. It is approximately 250 kilometers, 160 miles from the capital of Uganda, Kampala. Bogis is found on the slopes of Mount Elgon. Today, we shall be taking you through the different stages of processing Arabica coffee. Well, well uh, you are welcome. This is a Bogis cooperative union, and uh, this is the premises. You can call it a secondary, uh, prim, uh, secondary society, whereby we have uh, the primary societies at the village level. So, we receive parchment uh, specifically from our clients, those are farmers, who collectively bring their parchment in here, uh, which are registered. Each farmer who brings the parchment or the stock should be registered under the primary society. So when we get that parchment, uh, we have uh, some quality checks that we make before it is passed. Because uh, our interest here is to uh, know particularly what we are dealing with to satisfy the customer's demand or the customer's uh, requirements. So that uh, when we go through USDA, we are being awarded a certificate for the business. Well, the parchment or the analysis where we do that is uh, at the quality table whereby we shall discuss some few matters and uh, that is our entries where the coffee is uh, re registered 
either through the uh, motorcycle or through the vehicle. And after being allowed in and registered, we receive it at the buying section. Buying section is where we do the quality checks. And when it has passed the quality checks, we allow it to be stored in the silo system management. Uh, being engineered, operated by the engineers. And after that, uh, upon the receiver of the, uh, of the order, it's when the coffee is drawn to the processing area. And from the processing area, it's where the hauling, it's where the grading, it's where the polishing, and uh, where the color sorting is done. When necessary, the hand sorting at some times is done finally. The coffee is bagged. After being bagged, it is exported. We have got all the certification from the authorities which are needed. And after that, the coffee is loaded on the trucks and then it is taken out to the destination that is uh, being allocated. Well, we shall go, I think, to the quality table and then briefly discuss what happens there and then we'll continue it all. Please. So you see that the coffee is well dry. Now this one, this one gives us a picture that the whole batch that we have picked from the farmer has, has passed the moisture content for export purposes. If we buy green beans which are so high in moisture, it may become moldy. The oil will absorb that moldy content and the cup will be poor. And if you buy coffee which is over dry, which has dried and which has lost uh, its content, all the, the characters, this, there will be no smell when you roast that coffee. There will be no, no aroma. So we have to buy uh, exact uh, moisture content for that, which gives allowance during the export, so that when you reach the final destiny, there's that characters that will remain there. We're remaining working for the engineer to take it to the silo system for storage purpose. Maybe briefly can explain what happens after this. 
Yes, the reason why we say that uh, we have the best machinery in the world is one. This machinery was designed in such a manner that uh, we don't have physical contact with the, with the coffee from the time it is poured here until the time when we bag it. There is no physical contact with it. It is food, okay? So the machinery was designed that, in that manner. It's automated. It does 40 tons a day. That's its capacity, installed capacity. 40 tons? 40 tons a day. In other words, 5 tons per hour. Nearly 8 hours a day, that is 40 tons. That's the design capacity of this machinery. Here, we have, like you said, uh, this is what we call the infill hopper. Coffee that has passed the quality test there is poured in here. Then it is taken up for, into what we call a pre cleaner, pre cleaner system. Pre cleaner system consists of the drum sheave up there. The drum sheave eliminates from the coffee things like cycle, strain from the coffee. The drum sheave does that. Then below here we have the, what we call the separator glass fire. It removes anything foreign from the coffee. Dust, some whatever it is, to eliminate it there. So that after it has gone through there, it is led through bucket elevators, upwards, screw conveyors, into silos for storage. Okay? So what we store there is clean coffee. Storage capacity. We have 32 silos there. You shall see them. And each has a capacity of 16 tons. 16 tons. So our total storage capacity of the silo is. Bit? My math is right? 5 what? 520 something. 16 times. 16 times 32. That's the storage capacity we have there. Uh, apparently, the capacity that we have is 8 silos. Eight silos, seven, seven. full. You shall see them shortly. Nine, 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 nine silos full. So nine times sixteen. What's that? What is that capacity? Nine times sixteen. To this, uh, then after that, it will come to this screw conveyor. Uh, this screw conveyor will push coffee to what is this bacteria elevator, and this bacteria elevator will raise coffee to this screw conveyor. And then after that, it will pour in this hopper here. This hopper divides two lines. Eh? Uh, we have line one and then line two, and on this hopper here, they have connected what they call a flow meter. The flow meter weighs coffee flowing through it. So after that, I will go with line one, uh, which is this one here. What you are seeing, this is this aspiration system uh, for removing dust and then uh, some other particles. Eh? Uh, it collects them somewhere there on this group there. So we shall just go with uh, our coffee line one. So. It will bring, after weighing coffee, it will bring this bucket elevator, this bucket elevator will raise coffee towards this uh, pre cleaner. Remember, after storage, in the process of maybe sweeping, uh, some dust you may find that it has again gone back to the, to the product. So, again, we pre clean it by putting these bags, it collects the, the whatever, the, the defect which has been, I mean, combined with the coffee, and then after that, it will proceed. So down here we have also a distoner, a distoner that moves stones. You know farmers are also funny that uh, somebody wants to get then after that our coffee will go for another further process. So on this way, this bacteria elevator here, along it they have connected what they call a spot magnet. Uh, after, after this we have seen that we have moved the dust, we have removed stones, we have remained with uh, the metals. So you find that on the way they will connect to what they call a spot magnet before our coffee is going to be hard. Removing those husks now. So this is our polisher. We can call it a polisher or a hand, which removes now the top husks and then remains the green beans. But now, if you look at the beans and then the husks, husks are light and then the bean is heavy. So you find that by the help of the fan and then the cyclone, uh, it removes the process that the beans will flow and then the husk will be absorbed, will be sucked and then being collected in the cyclone and then our school conveyor down there what you will see to this one here is going to help us and then collect all the husks and then sends it to the silo, the husk silo outside by the help of the blower. So here our coffee will remain green beans but not graded. Green beans but not graded. So here from the hurry 
and it has now remained only green beans, it will go for the further process whereby we are going to grade it. So the first grade we have E, followed by double A, and then single B, like that, as you are seeing here. So, but now we have three, uh, we have three grades which don't go for further process, whereby we have E, we have chips, and then F. The rest of the grades go for further process, whereby we have single A, we have PB, we have C, we have double A, B, and then UG. So these ones go for further process, as we are seeing. But now, these ones here, after being held and then graded, uh, we have uh, what we call uh, catadors. They can call them washing basins. Yeah. After hurling, there are some, on this bin is here, there are some silver line. silver line or membrane which remains on this coffee bin here. Because the buyer wants a green coffee bin. Yeah. Remember, washed, very green. So it's the farmer what he wants. So after that, we have these washing basins which I'm calling the catalogs. It helps us to remove that layer on the bin and it remains only the green bin. So after that, our line two, line one ends here, and then line two, just bring and then comes and also so starts from here. What I've just explained here is what we have just been, what you are seeing on the other side. So from here, I'll just shift and then I come here. It's the same procedure. Have the catalog and then these are whatever. So here, double A, single A, B, P, B, and then UG1, this coffee will be ready depending on the customer. Mm. But if you want to be processed again, then there's also another further process which we are going to see down there. Uh, like uh, we are going to find the cutter, I mean a, a gravity table, and then a color sorter. Because the farmer wants green beans, and you find that maybe in the process of harvesting or the some whatever beaten by the insects, the beans. So we have uh, a car, a car, a gravity table which removes now the light, uh, light, uh, light beans, and then leaves the heavy beans the other side. So uh, after that, we have also a color sorter which now removes the the reddish in that green beans, uh, maize beans, uh, other materials which are not coffee beans. Eh? So it also removes and then it remains uh, green coffee bean. So after that, uh, we, we, they bag it in a 60 kg, and then after that there is a sewing, and then after that they are going to stack it. But now, uh, what you are seeing here is now the husk silo, this one here. I saw, you know, we have a blower behind it there. Uh, a blower helps us to send these husks. The one now, the aspiration system has helped to remove. It sends to this husk side outside there, which you are going to see. Thank you. At the beginning of the process, what is process? All this machinery you see does mean? It has the parchment copy. Hurling means we are putting the green beans and parchment. And rather, us. then the grading, cleaning, and then sorting. That's what this machine does all. Oh. What you see behind us here is the wood that laid the golden egg. This machine was installed in 1957, called the John Gordon. It's still working, but it's, it's, it's undoing is that it's so many compared to this way. For a shift of one person here, you need 34 to be our shift that way. So here we go. You just can take us to the... So we have just been at the control room. Control room. I'm just now going to show the machines the way how that flow is going on. So I said you have two channels. Eh? As you are seeing, one is there for discharging coffee, and then another one here. So this one here, please, and then pour in this, this bucket elevator, and this bucket elevator raise this coffee, to pour across, so say, screw from there. And then I talked of a hopper. This is the hopper, it divides now the two lines. This is the back of hopper I told you from the other side. It divides now the two lines. You have line one and then line two. But apparently we are using one line. One is the, has some whatever, has breakdowns. 
So this is the flow meter. The flow meter weighs coffee going through it. And then after that, it will pour in this back elevator. This back elevator, this one also raised. I talk to the free cleaner. Free cleaner or separator, something like that as well. It is there. So it helps us to remove the dust after storage. You know, sometimes, as I said, in the process of sweeping. And these are some of the dust that we put. They are here. Mm -hmm. See, another little. So after that, we have the distoner, and the distoner, as I say, removes now the stone. This is going to remove it. This one here, and this is the distoner. Mm. These are the stones. So after there, another further process, it is now going to pour in this battery vehicle. And this battery will raise this coffee up. And then along the way, you can come and see. So after that, after polishing or hiding, this chamber here we are seeing it is where that separation of husks and then green beans are being done. You find that the green beans will flow down and then the husks are going to be sucked through these big pipes and then it's going to only be collected in those cyclones there. Back down there, see how they collect the stones. And then, if you want to do one, the operator will be here, will open and then it will flow here. And then it's going to be taken to the right hopper there for the color sort of so Yes, this machinery is called a gravity table. Right or wrong, gravity table. Its purpose is to reject beans that have been insect infected. Beans that have been damaged by machine. In other words, it rejects beans that are not whole. It also rejects beans that are, have a low specific gravity. In other words, beans may look like it is a wall, but it's specific light, so that one will be rejected. So there are three rejects this machine does. Thereafter, it subjects the beans that have been uh, gravity table sorted to color sorting for the final part of sorting. Color sorting removes from the beans that which is not green, eliminates them. But however, even with the best color sorter in the world. Remember that? Even with the best color sorter in the world. It won't be 100%. So that's why you see some ladies just doing the hand sorting. Okay. Okay. There is the color sorter. That's why the final sorting is done. So after machines, the final sorting is done by the hand. Well, not always. Not always. But uh, it will depend on the different levels that the final machine has produced. Yeah. Now this is our color sorter. Uh, the one he has just told, told us that the more uh, the reddish and the blue it only selects green beans, I mean green coffee beans, and then the more the rejects, and the rejects will be being collected from there. Down there, there is even a bar. And then the coffee itself, green beans, will come to the top of it. And then after that, they are going to wait 60 kgs bags. If it is export, they are going bags uh, for only export. And then these are the dealers of ours, those ones are for local uh, packaging. 
Then after that, we have also sewing the machine. So we have to that's why we take it for the stack. TS, Jessica. I'm the in charge of this section. This is the, the processing floor. I know we have uh, the, the engineering have taken over the stages of uh, production up to this same stage. So this is the, the final the final stage. And here in this section, we deal with the, the final product and the work in progress. That's why you're seeing this is what the hand sorting. Uh, when the green beans, when the parchment copy has gone through all these uh, stages, we offload from here and we weigh a bag at 60 kilos. If you are selling locally, we have 60 grades, we have AA, we have A, we have PB, we have B, we have C, then we have UG, that is undergrade. So uh, we always meal when, if we have an order, but we, if we don't have an order, we don't meal. Because when you just meal, the coffee is so sensitive. Once you remove the, the parchment, that color, the outer cover, automatically it is going to change the color, the aroma and all other things. So that's why we are seeing, we are seeing this talk. This one, we had a contract, it's the corner cafe. It's going to Spain. We are having, the coffee is now ready. These are 320 bags of AA. We have also 320 and 320. If we are exporting, we put in Ghana bags. If we are selling locally, we use this Holton bags. Uh, Why the ladies are hand sorting, the, this machine was made that the, the human contact with the green beans is what is minimal. The coffee comes from the other side, goes to the hala, to the grader. Then this is also for quality improvement, the craft table and the, the color sorter. But this one now, the hand sorting, now the, the machine work has been done and there's no more work. Machine, that's why this is now the coffee, it can't, the defect are 7%, uh, 5 6%, that's why I've given the ladies to right? hand sort, but all the hand sorting is, is so minimal. Our, when you're also selling, the, the customer will make a contract with us and we tell the marketing and the operations, the planting in here, the, 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 the defect count. So when we start meeting, we shall say, ah, corner is taking the, maybe three containers or four, contain, four containers, but the defect content, content wants like maybe three percent, four percent. So this one, you, you're seeing the one which is already, this one's having defect content of three percent. But with our UCDA standard, we, the export percentage is from one up to five. That is where. Yeah. Here is the department the, the section where we do value addition. Now, when we get your green beans in this form, what we do is we use that roster. That is the roster over there that you see. It is a total of capacity per roster of a batch. And each roast, when you put in, takes 20 minutes for the roast that you want. Now, we have different roast levels. We have light roast, medium roast, we have medium to dark, and then dark roast. Depending on what the client wants. We have clients who want to chew. Want, uh, we have customers who want to use the coffee for herbal med medicine. And then you have co uh, coffee for African cup or African purpose, that is black coffee. Then you have coffee for espresso. Then you have people who are addicted to caffeine. They want that roast. So all those roast levels serve different uh, certain purpose of the, of the client. Now, well, right now what I'm doing is I'm heating up the drum or I'm heating up the machine. When I heat it up, I, may, I, I want to make sure that when I pour in the, in the, in the, in the, in the raw, raw coffee, it, 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 it begins roasting as soon as possible. Because if I delay, uh, the coffee will not bring out the good flavors that we want in the cup. So it, is, it first heats up for 15 minutes. Then I pour it inside the raw material. Now after roasting for 20 minutes, this is the cooling chamber. The roasting takes place inside. This, this is the roasting chamber. And then it's the, the cooling chamber. When the coffee is ready, I open here. It will drop onto the cooling chamber. Here there is a, a cooling system. There is a suction fan, which pulls the carbon dioxide during the uh, carbon emission, when during the, 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 the roasting. Now this 
This cooling chamber removes that carbon dioxide and it makes the coffee clean from any fumes. So that when you take off, it doesn't smell like fumes. When the coffee is cool, I bring my drum, put it under here, then I pour. I throw out. I throw out my coffee. It pours into this drum. Now this is the material which is stainless steel. Why stainless steel? Stainless steel is, is, is good for human uh, health. Because if I use plastic, it wears out. And this that's the result of cancer in the long run. Because due to that heat that is that are in the beans, they may react with the product. So we are advised by the authorities, that is Uganda uh, Bureau of Standards, to use stainless steel. And when it is the copper there, I make it to cool down by nature or by room temperature. Then I pour it into the grinder. Now this grinder, what it does is it crush off into powder form from the bean, roasted beans. Now after crushing it into powder, we use our our labor which is here to feed that powder into these packets. And these are our wing scales. Now these wing scales are just to ascend the exact quantity of the ground that you're going to sell in the market. So the pack is nine grams, you put into your product, open that. So, so you put into your product, and then you seal it up or zip it up, because it's open. Now after zipping up, using that sealing machine, extreme end, I give it to the salesperson, who distributes it at a different uh, selling point. Now this pack goes at 18,000, which is a quarter, or 250 grams. We have a big pack like uh, more than this, two times, which is 500 grams. It goes at 15,000. Then we have a small pack, which is at 100 grams, which costs 3,500 units. We have this automatic machine. This was due to uh, local demand by our suppliers, those are farmers. They are the cultivars, but not, not consumers, not good consumers of coffee. So we uh, brought this technology to just like a showcase to give a sample that we want also, we want to encourage farmers also to consume their own coffee at a minimum or uh, reasonable price. So this machine uh, produces rolls, but I make sure that I make them in dozen, fellow pieces. And each this uh, each dozen costs 3,800 shillings for 10 grams. Then 15 grams costs uh, 4,000 shillings for fellow pieces, those are 12 dollars at the factory price. So that is basically what we do here. And then maybe to chip in the other part of the quality aspect, these are for the uh, sample restaurants. I told you that at the buying section, when the coffee fails the quality chain, we bring here to be subjected to the quality chain. Now, these are samples which roast different samples uh, from different places or from different origin. If I want to ascertain the quality of coffee from Lamuli, I may use Pochi 1, then coffee from uh, maybe Sirocco, Pochi 2, then the coffee from uh, lower, uh, lower zones, I may use this. So this one roasts, then, then after that, I need to cool, then I start tapping it. Now, tapping it is a uh, Fill the accessory or fill the, the, the characters that in the coffee, the attributes that are in the coffee. And if I, after that I give the final results to the, the, the farmer. Good. Because we cannot cross ginger, we cannot cross um, Ampala, we cannot cross our country. So it is local consumption mainly and maybe uh, using cargo means to Kampala, which is bit costly. So the, uh, the demand has a bit uh, related to it. But otherwise we are trying our best to see that we reach our clients. Thank you for your coming.